Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Harlow. I am the online learning librarian as well as the liaison to kinesiology, public health education, and community and therapeutic recreation for UNCG libraries. So uh, at this point, years ago, UNCG libraries created a series of webinars for the UNCG community, uh, staff, faculty, and graduate students are welcome to these on online learning and innovation. So welcome. In this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff, and faculty, in this case, will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools, such as Canvas, Google, Box, and more. These are 30-minute webinars that are recorded in WebEx meetings and placed on this webpage, which I'm going to drop in the chat. So this webpage will also contain other applicable links in, uh, applicable, and uh, it, such as slides, uh, links to any resources, et cetera, as well as where the recordings will live. Will live. Um, we also give the recording file to the uh, faculty member, ITC or ITS staff member who are presenting these and they can um, do whatever they like with it. So I'm gonna cover a couple of logistical things before we start. Please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red. Feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenter. Excuse me, at the end of the webinar. If you do not have a microphone, you're also welcome to participate in the chat with your questions. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please put them in chat and I will track the question while the presenter uh, is doing their thing. So if there's any questions about the logistical things, you can put them in chat right now and I'll answer it. Um, I also am gonna give you my email address. You can email me uh, during the webinar if you have any tech issues and we can try to work it out. But also remember that these are recorded and I will um, be sending you all a link to the recording uh, later uh, as well. The recording will also be closed captioned um, in YouTube but we'll have participant data uh, extracted. So is there, like I said, just put the questions in the chat. Uh, so uh, today this session is hosted by Rachel Olson, UNCG Library Social Sciences Librarian, is on Google and Hyperdocs, which she's gonna talk about what that all means. But just a note for this session, uh, Rachel is a librarian and a faculty member and has years and years of teaching experience. So she uses Hyperdocs, but she doesn't work for ITS. She's not an instructional technology uh, consultant in ITC. Uh, for a department. So if you have any questions about Google um, or tech issues with Google, definitely contact ITS or your ITC for your department. If you don't know who that is, I am happy uh, to do that, to send you their information in the chat or after the fact. So uh, again, this is just her techniques and uh, what she likes to do in her teaching. So um, we will get started, Rachel, and I will mute myself and turn my video off. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm Rachel, and we're going to talk about HyperDocs, which is um, kind of a unique thing that I learned about a few years ago. Um, it's, it's really popular in K-12 circles, um, but I think there are a lot of ways that it could be effectively used at colleges and universities. So very often, um, you know, K-12 teachers are really good at using free tools and coming up with really innovative, cool ways of teaching um, using those tech tools. And I will say that I was introduced to this by an ITC here at UNCG named Mika Davis. Um, so I can certainly give you her contact information as well. Um, if you are interested, she's more of a hyperdocs expert than I am. I've just sort of used some of this stuff for my own purposes. So um, hyperdocs started in Gosh, I'm not exactly sure. It started around, I want to say, 2014, 2015. Um, three women who we will, uh, I'll share with you later, had this idea to use Google Docs um, in, in a sort of flipped classroom method. Um, so instead of students sitting and listening to a teacher lecture, they actually go um, and sort of explore the topic through these resources. So you have these six facets. Um, sort of designed around 21st century learning. So engage, explore, explain, reflect, share, and apply. Um, and we will talk about what those mean and how they get used in context. So just to kind of frame it for you a little bit. Um, 
So it's a digital lesson plan, um, and it's going to, when you're designing a hyperdoc, you want to be really careful to be intentional about how you're doing it. You want to make sure that um, you are practicing good pedagogy and lesson design. It's not you just putting a Google Doc together and adding some links to it, right? It's meant to be engaging. It's meant to be um, something that students can complete either asynchronously or synchronously. I use it asynchronously. Um, <clears throat> and it gets students to kind of engage in um, in their learning a little bit more. It's, it's very hands-on. And I'll show you some good examples um, that you can use that will illustrate this. So the three creators of HyperDocs are Lisa Highfield, Kelly Hilton, and Sarah Landis. And these are their Twitter uh, handles, so you'll have access to this later if you want to follow them. But they created this, um, and they actually wrote a book about it. It's called the HyperDoc Handbook. Um, and I'm looking on my bookshelf to see if I've got it here in the office. I think I've taken it home. But anyway, um, it's a good book. It, it, it's got a lot of a uh, lot more background information about this topic um, and kind of talks through their rationale for the different steps that they use, the different phases of a hyperdoc lesson. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite helpful. So again, they're K-12 teachers. It's very focused on K-12. Um, so what you're going to see from me is kind of how I've taken some of them um, and turned them into college level materials. So this is a very basic HyperDoc template that they've created. Um, and you can see they've added multiple steps. Um, I like this a lot. It's very helpful to me because it tells you what each step is supposed to be about. You know, it gives you an idea of what each of these, um, what each of these is meant to do, what the, what the goal is. Um, and you can just fill the template in. So let me show you this page where I found this. Um, they have all kinds of templates here. This is just the basic HyperDoc lesson. Um, so when you click on it, you'll see that it comes up. Um, and all HyperDocs really require you to do um, that all that you need to do in order to be able to access this and use it is to make a copy. Um, so you would go to File, Make a Copy, and then you could put things um, in your uh, Google Drive and organize it however you want. So I've used this one before. Um, they have a lot of um, different examples from different disciplines, again, K-12, that people have used in the past. And these are all freely available. And you can see the book right here the HyperDoc Handbook. If we don't have a copy of this in the library, uh, I'm not sure if we do. Let me look. If we don't have it, I will um, make sure that we get one. Let's just search really quickly. Yeah, it looks like we don't. Um, so I'll make sure that we get one and it gets on the shelves here. Um, but this is quite a useful, a useful book, for me at least. Um, so my favorite HyperDoc examples um, I will show you, this is one um, that was actually created by Mika Davis, again, the person who introduced me to HyperDocs, and it's a guide on how to use them effectively um, in your teaching. So it, very, it sort of explains what HyperDocs are, um, it, you know, it has an emphasis on you really being active here. So this activity asks you to um, you click here, and you view this and this is actually it's a really cool activity what it asked participants to do was to fill in a slide um, with information about themselves so you can see this is one that a i believe this was at guilford college i could be wrong but anyway um, so she asked three questions how do you currently use the google suite what aspects of educational technology excite you and what are some barriers that keep you from integrating technology and she had participants actually answer the questions here and put an avatar and she's very careful as she goes through. Um, <clears throat> you could just go back to the HyperDoc to get to the next step, or she's got it all linked right here. Click here when you've answered the question, and this takes you back. Um, so the next step, you watch a video clip. Uh, actually, you can choose any of these. That's one really innovative thing that Mika does is she gives you lots of different options as well within the HyperDoc. So this is much more than just a Google Doc with some links. This actually gives you, you know, multiple ways to explore it and respond. It's all about response to different prompts. You don't just have students passively sort of um, watch these things without any sort of 
context or, or um, responding. Um, so there's all kinds of, of different activities that she does here. And um, again, these are the three women that originally created this. So I really love this example. Um, another one that I'll show you, someone did a staff meeting template, um, just to sort of <clears throat> organize their information that they wanted to convey. Um, and, you know, it's, it's got some recommendations for how you could get people into, uh, like, do some team building activities, things like that. Um, one more that I'll show you, let's do making a PSA. This one's, uh, you potentially use this for like a political science class, social studies class, um, and you view one of the PSAs and um, view different elements. You can, you get the idea. It's, it's, um, it requires students to create a product. Um, so the SAMR model is something that HyperDocs is pretty into. So SAMR is this idea about how technology can transform learning. Um, so if you've never heard of SAMR before, the first step is that technology would just be a substitute for something. It's not actually functionally changing um, what we're doing. So one thing, um, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Um, let's see. What's a good substitution example for SAMR? Anyway, and then you have augmentation where technology acts as a direct substitute with functional improvement. So for me, that's using a Google Doc instead of a Word document to type through something. Um, it has functional improvements because it is because of all the features that Google Docs has. Um, so there's a functional improvement there. And those are both enhancement steps. I'll try to think of an example of substitution. I'll come up with one. Um, and then you move on. These next two steps are transformation, so modification and redefinition. Um, so modification, um, <clears throat> it's you're doing a significant redesign of the task. And then re redefinition allows you to do things that you previously couldn't do without the technology. So um, hyperducts really get into sort of it could be any of these four steps. You could use it for any of that. I really think it, it has the potential to, to be redefining for a lot of people. So it's interesting. You can do, um, there's a hyperdoc on that. Here you go. Here's some good examples of um, the four steps. So substitution, maybe you're taking notes digitally. You're reading and annotating digital things. Um, here you could collaborate modification and redefinition. So if you're looking for some examples, obviously, um, I got a little tongue tied there, but you can use those. Okay. Um, this, if you want to go to this link, maybe Sam, you could drop that in the chat. Um, this is a practical example of one that I use with our middle college students here at UNCG. Um, so these are high school students who take some college courses. Um, <clears throat> and they come to the library fairly often, um, and what I did was the there was one day where seniors were coming to the library and several of them missed the session for some reason or missed part of the session, so I created a hyperdoc um, so that they could review what we had learned. Um, and so I'll go through that quickly. So they have to do some brainstorming, um, and they oh, it requires them to make a copy of this document. Um, so they would go through they make their own copy and then they can write the answers to the responses here. So I have them go to a database called Credo Reference and it's basically like a reliable Wikipedia. Um, and they do some background research. They also look at this, um, which is a, a graphic that I made to illustrate uh, some steps students can take when they're evaluating sources of information for quality. So they look at that. Um, then they're required to skim an article and answer questions based on the graphic. And they're answering the questions in the Google Doc. Um, and then they're going to look at each one of these resources, which we had viewed in class, and they're going to um, actually send me an email um, with their responses to these. Or they could just type it directly into the document. You could do that either way. Um, they watch a video that I created especially for them on finding newspapers in the library. Um, and then there's one that explains finding books in the library, and both of those require after they um, look at the video that they complete a task related to it. And then here's some citation tips, um, and they 
have my contact information. So this is not um, this is not like a fully um, a fully filled out hyperdoc. This doesn't go through all of the different steps that you saw earlier. Um, like here in Mika's document, she does a little bit more with it. Um, but it works pretty well for, for our purposes. Um, a couple students completed this. One thing I will say about HyperDocs is that it requires your students to um, pay attention to detail and follow instructions, which seems like very little to ask, but you would be surprised. Um, so I don't always use these because some students just can't seem to follow directions and, and get it done. <clears throat> but sometimes you can have success with it. You also need students that are um, relatively um, relatively savvy with Google Docs, or, I mean Google Drive. They don't have to be experts by any means, um, but they do need basic knowledge of how to use this, which I find is not usually a problem, but again, you would be surprised. Um, there's no such thing as a digital native. People have this idea that because students uh, or, or uh, people who are coming up now have access to technology all their lives, that they somehow know how to use it correctly, and that's just not true. So um, you have to be careful. This is one I did for a Communication Studies 105 class. <clears throat> I offer uh, this as an option that people can choose if they uh, don't have time for me to come to their class, but they still want their students to um, get the benefit of instruction. So they watch a video, they view a presentation, um, they have to make a copy of this particular document, and then they've got to answer a few questions about how they're feeling um, about doing research, their experience that they have with it. Um, they find me a book, peer-reviewed article, um, any challenges that they're having. I'm taking a leaf out of um, Mika's book here by linking back to the HyperDoc document at all stages. Um, and then also taking something from Mika, um, I had them fill it out in this way. This is just the template. Um, but anyway, they would put a link to the, what they're going to use, put their name, their research question, a permalink to an article, and then um, explain why those resources are relevant to what they're doing. So that's the CST one. Um, they could do a couple of other things. A Padlet. I like Padlet. Um, they can use this to ask what remaining questions they might have. Um, so yeah, that's another example of how I use it. Um, more resources, <clears throat> there are entire um, YouTube lists, Pinterest boards on this. I would encourage you to explore SAMR, S-A-M-R. Um, I don't think that I explained it super well, so I would encourage you to get some clarification by seeing this, okay? Um, you can also, there's a Padlet, um, an entire Padlet that's been put together where people are sharing hyperdocs um, of what they're doing. So it's a little bit of a mess, <laughs> but if you're uh, if you're into Padlet, if you kind of like that structure, um, you can see all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, K K12 people are just really, really good at sharing and coming up with um, free ways to get around, um, you know, get around paywalls and make sure that they're delivering high quality instruction. They're really good at using these tools. So um, my goal is, is to make this something or to encourage people in higher ed to take advantage of the work that these folks have already done for us um, and modify it to fit college level teaching. And here's a link to this presentation um, if you are interested in accessing it later. So that was relatively short. Um, so we have plenty of time for questions if um, you would like to ask them or we have uh, I can show you some more examples of things that people have done with HyperDocs. Great. Are there any questions? You can put them in the chat or unmute yourself or I can unmute you. And this is how you can get in touch with me. It's just rachel.olson at uncg.edu. I'll put this back up for anyone who's interested. The graphics and colors from Google Doc Tools, yes, that's correct. So Google Docs is going to allow you um, 
So let me show you that example that I use. Um, the way that I was able to do this was just file, page setup. Oh, hang on, file, page setup. Um, and it actually allows you to choose a page color. I just thought this was a little bit, you know, it's just something fun. Um, it's a little more fun than white. Um, you can also, like, I could fill in this box and make this um, a certain color. There should be a, looks like a paint bucket somewhere. Yeah, paint bucket here. And I could make that box all black. Of course, then I would need to um, make my text white. But you get the idea. All of those colors, all of those, um, all of those little details have been done using Google Docs. That's correct. Any other questions? Like I said, I will buy a copy of this book for the UNCG libraries um, through my collection budget, and I will put it, uh, I'll make sure that it gets on the shelves here in case you're interested in looking at it. It's not very long, um, but it does go into a lot more detail about HyperDocs um, and how they can be used. And um, if you just Google the word HyperDocs, it will take you to this website. It's just hyperdocs.co. And here are a bunch of templates that you can use, uh, resources. You obviously want to credit whenever you create a HyperDoc. Most of them, um, most of the templates will have a little note at the bottom um, about copyright. Um, most of these are, you can feel perfectly free to share. They have a whole page of samples. Again, much more K-12 focused, um, but you could certainly check some of them out, examples that people have done. And they're all nicely organized in Google Drive. And you can ask your ITC for tips on using Google Drive if that's something that um, you would like to get more into. Anybody else? Great. Thank you. So as we are getting ready to end this, I do want to let you know that this is a series so um, let me pull it back up because I was on the hop hyper dog. Um, the next one in the online learning innovation series is Tuesday, October 8th at 1 p.m. It is on web accessibility resources at UNCG and is by Melanie Ely, UNCG online web accessibility coordinator. Um, and then there's one in November on Canvas and, and analytics. And one on um, in December on tips for lecture and web capture. So I'm going to put this in there. The sign up link is on there as well. And this is also you'll get an individual email with the recording. Uh, we will close caption it as soon as possible. But um, you will uh, the recording will also live on this uh, web page. So if you also like the webinar format, uh, the other series we won is on research and applications. It's on library resources and research tools. Um, so a little bit different, but uh, has some overlap. So uh, we did a great one on researcher identity management uh, in August. And our one coming up in September is on Policy Map, which is a database that provides demographic, uh, economic, housing, health, education, and quality of life data for the United States from sources like the census and beyond. So uh, be on the lookout in your email or go to this web page. Uh, and uh, check it out and sign up and let us know if you have any questions. So thank you for coming. Thank you, Rachel. It was a great session. I always like learning about HyperDocs. True. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.